and today I would like to speak to you about the topic of the domino effect of fasting. The domino effect of fasting. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reason. Fasting is not abstaining from food to lose weight. Fasting is not a starvation and fasting is not a hunger strike. Fasting is not to get deeper spiritually or to be more um, more self-righteous. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reason. As we presented in the beginning of the fast and I'm just going to repeat it, we encourage people with one of the three fasts. The first one is the full fast or the fast that's just unliquid and we highly encourage to do that one. The second one is they call it the Daniel's fast where you abstain from all the pleasant food from the uh, meats, from the bread, from the dairy and from the sweets. Pretty much you eat you know very unpleasant but healthy food and that one may seem first oh it's easy until you start just eating grains you know every day and apples and after about three days you're like man this is hard and so that one is not easy and the third fast and that's for people who maybe are currently nursing or uh, people who are in the taking medicine or some other things where you do just one meal a day and so we really encourage every person to jump on this fast we're one third through uh, two thirds through and so uh just one week left if you kind of ignored this you know like nah this doesn't apply to me i'm fine i really want to correct that today you're part of the church this is something that the church is doing you know you don't have to do what maybe somebody else is doing but jump on it jump on the train there's a grace on this fast um, the the amount of people that are fasting in our church is, is crazy so many people that are doing just on water who've never done before and they are strong and they're more sensitive to the Holy Spirit and they're they're passionate and honestly a lot of them like thank you for calling this fast I am excited for that they're coming to prayers very early in the morning they're dedicating their life to the Lord we're not fasting just because to fast we are fasting so that God can propel our spiritual growth and God can do things in the church as well. We're believing for a new building. We're believing for many people to come to know Jesus in our city. We are believing for incurable sicknesses to be healed in Jesus name. We're believing for the deformed, people with deformities, people with metal things in their body, people who have broken and missing organs or cut out organs to be miraculously restored by God. We're believing for the dead to be raised. We're believing for the lepers to be cleansed. I am not mentioning anything that is not in the Bible. I'm not mentioning anything that Jesus did not do and disciples did not do. I'm not mentioning anything that we are not encouraged and mandated by heaven to do. And so and that is one of the reasons why we fast. It's so Lord we position ourselves for your best for what you have for us this year in Jesus name. Fasting is not only for pastors. Fasting is for anybody who has flesh. Amen. Come on somebody. If you're taking notes, fasting is trading the bowl for the blessing. It's trading the temporary for eternal, the physical for spiritual and for visible for invisible. The scripture says that Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drunk, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Genesis 25 verse 34. So watch this. Esau traded his blessing for a bowl of soup. Jacob, he got the blessing by trading a bowl of soup. Jacob gave up a meal so he can get a blessing and Esau gave up a blessing so he can keep his meal. There are people in this room today who are like Esau's. You will trade whatever so you can keep your tummy happy. And there are people today who will trade whatever so that they can have a future with God. I want to challenge you, be Jacob. Maybe you were born on the wrong side of the tracks. Maybe the blessing wasn't given to you at your birth. Maybe your mom or your daddy didn't give you anything in the genes or in the inheritance. You did not have a good example. Like Jacob, you feel deprived. You feel like, you know, you got the second best. You're fighting against demons left and right. Be like Jacob. Learn to trade your bowl so God can give you a blessing. 
salvation is free but the blessing is an invisible power propelling you for expansion so blessing is is an empowerment for expansion God wants you to expand God wants you to go further in your family in your finances and in your walk with him but there is a price that we have to pay we have to lay our flesh on the altar and one of the practical ways you can do that and I can do that is to leave the ball aside and say Lord I want something more than that temporarily temporarily I forgo this bowl temporarily I forgo this plate of food so that you can give me the blessing it doesn't mean you'll get rich the next day it doesn't mean you're gonna grow wings the next day it doesn't mean angels will show being up showing up the next day but there will be a shift in the realm of the spirit where well, the blessing of God started to follow Jacob now and people who always live their life feeding their flesh they can never forego. Today it starts with, ah, I can't deny myself of food. Tomorrow is I can't deny myself of lust. Tomorrow is I cannot deny myself of cigarettes. I cannot deny myself of alcohol. Why? Because when the flesh is spoon fed, when the appetites always get what they want, we live a sensual and a fleshly Christian life. We're not a spiritual beings. We become soulish beings who are trying to have a spiritual experience. Fasting is giving up my bowl for his blessing. The foundational verse that I would like to take for today's message is Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and verse 2. If you have a Bible you can open there or if you have a phone you can open there as well. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. And verse 2 is the verse we've heard so many times. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I'm going to go through just a few basic points on the topic of fasting. Our goal is not to just inspire you. Our goal is to educate and bring enlightenment of God's word. Number one, fasting increases spiritual weight, not spiritual worth. Fasting increases spiritual weight but it does not increase our spiritual worth you don't become more loved by God because you're fasting you don't become more righteous because you're fasting you may feel more righteous just because you're feeling more righteous than somebody else it doesn't mean you're more righteous come on somebody I want you to notice what Paul starts with. First 11 chapters of book of Romans is the best explanation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul is diving deep into the wrath of God. He's diving deep into the righteousness of Jesus. He's diving deep into the fact that we are saved by grace through faith. All 11 chapters Paul is explaining and diving into the mystery of the gospel. Chapter 12 Paul says now I beseech you by the mercies of God so because of this righteousness we respond to God's grace by offering our body as a sacrifice no knowledge of God's grace is not an excuse to sin knowledge of God's righteousness is not a license to do whatever it is an empowerment to offer your body as a living sacrifice not take Jesus's only sacrifice so that my body can do whatever it wants. So when I know what Jesus did on the cross, my response is sacrifice. In other words, fasting is not to receive God's righteousness. It's to respond to God's righteousness. We don't fast to receive God's grace. We fast because we have received God's grace. When I fast, when you fast, when you pray, when you fight, when you give, it is not to get it from God. It's because you got a revelation of what you already got from God. I beseech you by the mercies of God, Paul said. In other words, I implore you by the grace of God. I beg you because of the righteousness of Jesus, now offer your body as a sacrifice. Do not fast with wrong motives to become more righteous, to become closer to God or to become more holy. We receive that as a gift, a righteousness. 
we receive the grace as a gift but fasting does increase your spiritual weight you lose the physical one and you get the spiritual one during fasting and uh Pastor Dmitri last Sunday preached a wonderful message and he mentioned that that fasting decreases your physical weight but it increases your spiritual weight. You feel like a feather after 14 days or 7 days you feel light but in the spirit you feel heavy. In the spirit you walk and you feel like it's like some giant is walking. There is a boldness that is there. There is a sharpness that is in your spirit. There is, it's not that you're more righteous, but you're more aware of his righteousness. It's not that Jesus is closer. Your awareness is growing. Because it's not that you get more of God because God didn't give you 50% of him. He gave him all of self to him, to you. He gave all of his spirit, but you become more aware of what Jesus is in you. Can somebody say amen? amen? So we fast as a rational response to God's mercy, not an attempt to receive it. Paul says, because of mercy, now offer your body. Number two, fasting is presenting the body as a living sacrifice to God. Fasting is not the only way we present the body to God unbelievers sin using their body believers sin abusing Jesus's body man abuses and neglects and ignores his body by overeating becoming inactive being too active cursing fighting and killing by partaking of harmful substances by caring for an external abusing the internal and by getting too much or too little rest when we offer our body as a to the Lord I want you to notice what God wants from our body he wants not only that we offer it as a holy to God and acceptable but the first thing the Lord wants us to do with our body is to offer it as a living sacrifice every sin majority of sins not every sin because we can sin with our thought and with our attitudes it doesn't require you know the body but most of our sins we commit with our body if we drink it's with our body if we smoke with it's with our body if we have a violent outburst it's with our body if we watch pornography it's with our eyes if we engage in the moral behavior it's with our body we don't sin without our body we use our body in fact we abuse the body of Jesus when we commit sin and the scripture says first and foremost if you want to live holy in your body if you want to be acceptable to God in your body God says I want you to do something as a response to my mercy and grace offer it as a sacrifice not an offering what is the difference between offering and sacrifice the story I like to use a lot is a chicken and the pig were walking by decided to make a breakfast for the farmer and the chicken said you know I'll give him some eggs you gave him some bacon and the, the, of course the pig says well there's a problem with that if you give him eggs that's an offering if I give him bacon that's a sacrifice God is not asking for an egg he's asking for bacon he is asking not for an offering offering is Lord here it is but when your service to God through your body causes a feeling of loss sacrifice it's pleasing to God when you I'm, we're not talking about torturing we're not talking about some martyrdom mentality where you, you constantly want to beat yourself up for something no we're talking about you know the love of God for you and you say Lord my body belongs to you and you offer it as a sacrifice during fasting it's one of the best ways you can offer your body as a sacrifice and God wants a living sacrifice not a dead one he doesn't want you to die he wants you to live I can I submit to you until you offer your body as a sacrifice you will never truly live you will exist there will be a life that comes from God that will be released in your body you will feel it those of you who are fasting there's those moments yeah you you're like man whose idea was it God I just this is not good have you noticed when you're fasting days are slower it's like it's a fast it's supposed to be fast it's slow it's like the opposite of a fast it's so slow you're looking like it's only two o'clock you're looking at the clock so many times it seems like so slow please understand God is pleased when you give him your body 
not to earn his love but to reposition yourself to be more aware of who he is amen and the bible says after that so number one is that fasting is not to earn God's love fasting is to respond to it number two is that fasting helps us to offer a body as a living sacrifice number three fasting enables you not to be squeezed into the mold of this present age watch the domino effect I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God present your body as a living sacrifice and watch the beginning of the verse two do not be conformed to this world I believe if you are struggling, if I am struggling to follow the patterns of this world, the secret is this, I need to get the righteousness from God. Second thing is I respond to the righteousness of God. I gotta get my body in check. I gotta give it to God. And then number three comes, I have now the courage, the inner strength not to conform to this world. It's not the other way around. You don't start with not being conformed to the world. You start with righteousness. And then you respond to that righteousness by saying, Lord, I offer my body as a sacrifice. I gift it to you, not because I want to go to heaven, but because Jesus died on a cross for me. And then there is a power that is released in you and I not to be conformed to the world. Have you noticed that during fasting, it's very difficult to watch movies? Have you noticed it's very difficult to be engaged in unimportant conversations? Have you noticed that there are certain things that were totally acceptable for some of us before that and you start doing it, you're like, uh, it's like eating a donut while working out. I don't think I should be doing this. Because there is something within you that begins to pull you toward righteous living. There is something within you that begins to say, uh, that, 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 that's not that's not that's not the word that that's the world you gotta start not be conformed to this world if you want to have the power to live a holy life not holier than thou but holy life begin to know the righteousness begin to offer your body as a sacrifice and you won't be conformed to this world I truly believe that fasting helps us not to be conformed to this world because everything the world is is about self-discovery Fasting is about self-denial. The world is about finding yourself. When you fast, you lose yourself. And it goes contrary to the world. It goes contrary to the standards of this culture. Everybody is chasing their little inner chi. Everybody wants to find their gifts, their talents, their personality and every, everybody wants to develop themselves. What fasting does is you deny yourself and it goes contrary to the course of this world. That's why when you offer your body as a sacrifice, you will not look, live and act like the world because you will go the opposite of the direction. And the beautiful part is when you deny yourself is when you will truly discover yourself. <laughs> You gave that up and then you found yourself. You left your ego at the altar and then you found a purpose. You gave up your pride and then you found his eyes. You found his purposes and his goal for your life. Come on somebody. Are you with me? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Watch the progression. My people humble themselves first. Then what, what they will do? They will pray. And then they will seek my face. And only then they will turn from their wicked ways. God does not ask his people to turn from their wicked ways first. Because there is no inner power to help you do that. You can do that when you feel guilty. You can do that when you get caught, pulled over. You can do that when you finally got in trouble. But after a while that doesn't last more than a few days. The motivation wears out. There is no inner strength to turn away from the wicked ways. But the Lord says if you humble yourself. In the Bible humility is associated with fasting. David says through fasting I humbled myself. Ezra said we humbled ourselves with fasting. Ahab the most wicked king of Israel humbled himself with fasting so replace the fast the humility with fasting if my people fast 
they will pray they will seek my face and then the power will increase on the inside to not do wicked things you will have the power to overcome the wicked ways you have no power within you my friend the willpower is good until the demon comes against you the willpower is good until the flesh rises against you and then your willpower is like a little mice runs around runs from from that demon and the flesh power but when you humble yourself you cripple your flesh from its strength you cripple your appetites from its flesh and then you begin to pray you begin to seek the face of God something happens you come out no longer as you trying to be holy you trying to quit this and that you trying to keep this and that you come out as the Spirit of God gives you the strength to overcome your wickedness hunger subdues bad habits hunger physical hunger spiritual hunger cripples bad habits everyone wants a prayer line but not many of us wants God's protocol we all want I want to be transformed but God says know your rights in me offer your body as a sacrifice and some of us choose a fasting that's an offering we know we can fast good but we're like no I just don't want to cause any sacrifice and then we're like Lord but I don't want to conform to the world and God says follow my steps don't skip them follow my steps but no God I want this way it's not about how you want it it's how God says you should do it offer him as a sacrifice and then he will give you power to not be conformed to the things you're begging crying and asking and going to counseling Lord get this out of me God help me not to slip into that do into that your wife already put a little restrictions on you and your social media has limitations and everything but there is a power that doesn't come from you it comes from God and that power is released when you respond to God's righteousness you offer your body as a sacrifice and then there's a strength there's still a choice it's not automatic but there is a strength to not be conformed to this world number four fasting exposes weakness in the mind as faith expels them fasting exposes our weak minds where faith helps us to strengthen our mind I want you to notice mercy of God offer a body as a sacrifice don't be conformed to the world and the next step it says renewed mind the word of God renews our mind but the war makes our mind resilient let me say that again the word of God renews our mind but it's the war that makes it resilient and we need both renewed mind and resilient minds in the pandemic during COVID news and everything many people's minds are very wobbly very undecisive divided not sure constant attack on the mind the Lord wants to make your mind resilient oh and fasting is a good tool to do that because most what fasting is is not physical it's mental how many times you were tempted with food and you were not even hungry during fasting I'll prove it to you Jesus fasting 40 days and the Bible says after 40 days he was hungry he wasn't hungry for 40 days that's what the Bible said now I ask you a question why was he tempted with food during 40 days for the same reason you and I it's right here the enemy will tempt you during your fast with food with other things and this is an opportunity for the Lord to build within you a resilient mind people who finish the fast are not those who have the most weight it's those who are most resilient in their mind and during the fast something will be exposed the weakness of the mind how weak we are to let go and to start following the the flesh and the Lord will strengthen our minds so that when you make up your mind you don't quit when it's hard you finish when you're done can somebody say amen yeah. humanity's first sin was with food Jesus's first temptation was with food 
Food is not evil. Food is actually very good. But for most of us, food is the reason we have problems in our body. And food, abstinence of food can also be the reason why we will get rid of those problems. If eating those foods brought some things, maybe not eating them can solve those things. My dog, Jacko, anytime he gets sick, he stops eating for three days. Now, I have never taught him on fasting. <laughs> he hasn't watched our YouTube channel. He has never been to our church where we talked about fasting. He's been a few times to church for a sermon illustration. There is a nat natural thing God installed within the animal that when he gets food poison or when he gets sick and we know that he is sick, he stops eating for three days. We don't take him to the doctor. He simply stops eating. After about three days, I don't know what happens, but he gets cured through fasting. Fasting can cure even certain things in the physical. I'm not saying fasting cures everything, but there are certain things it will even cure if you fast. Fasting helps us to build a resilient mind. Number five, fasting brings transformation to your soul, body and spirit. As I mentioned, fasting has physical benefits. Not only a doctor, but I watched, not only a dog, but I watched this doctor, Dr. Ellen Goldhammer. He uses fasting as a, as a therapy or um, healing mechanism for patients. He does 21 days and 40 day fastings in the clinic. He has his whole clinic set up, doctors that are watching people's vitals and people's health. And he had a testimony, he had many of them, but one of the testimony is a lady who had the last stage of lymphoma. And the doctors, her doctor, regular doctor told her, there's nothing you can do. There's no diet you can change already. Honestly, you should just prepare for your death. And so she heard this, Dr. Ellen's, um, she heard his testimony on YouTube and others. She went to his clinic and said, I have the last stage of lymphoma. I have nothing to lose. Can you help me? And he said, we can try. So she goes for 21 days. They were there supervising her. She went for 21 days on a fast, water fast. Every morning and every evening, evening they checked her. She stayed in that hospital. Within 21 days, she, she felt better. She left the hospital, goes back to her old doctor who diagnosed her with lymphoma. They did tests on her and they did not find lymphoma. A year later, they did another test on her. They did not find lymphoma. Two years later, they did another test. Three years later, and now she's on the fifth year, completely cured of that disease. And this doctor, he's not a believer, who takes people into he super, supervised 40-day water fast. He claims there are sicknesses in the body. They could be destroyed if you stop feeding your body. He's not a Christian doctor. And he says this. He says every religion disagrees on everything except one, every religion has one thing in common. They all fast. He says it's not because they're dumb. He said they knew something. He says the scientists now have to figure out. This doctor, when he started this discovery, he actually was sued for killing people. They sued him. They took him to court and said, you're trying to kill people. There is no way fasting can cure people. This is wrong. This is some middle age uh, things. And then of course he won the lawsuit. Today he's considered an expert on alternative medicine. I want to encourage you that your fasting it's for spiritual reasons, but the benefits of your fasting will be physical. Your skin will get better. Your metabolism can be restored. Your appetites will be subdued and you will feel even physically better when you fast. Fasting has emotional benefits. How so? Many of us eat because of our emotions, not because of our stomach. Some of us process toxic emotions with food. We are not overweight just because of genes, but some of us have emotional problems that we use food as a medicine to cure emotions, which is not a good idea. But we don't know that until you start fasting and the negative emotions surface and now you have to find another comfort for your negative emotions. That's not food, but the Holy Spirit. That's why fasting helps to heal your emotions. 
it doesn't heal your emotions Holy Spirit does but it exposes a sickness that you have that the moment you are sad you open the fridge the moment you're depressed you're simply just making an order through Uber Eats the moment you are down you just stuff yourself and it helps you to feel better for a moment and then in the morning you look at yourself like may I hate myself why did I pick up weight again and so in this the cycle of depression and feeling worse feeling better and feeling worse and fasting stops the cycle and you have this ugly feeling surfacing looking at you and say give me food you're like I ain't got none give me something and then you say okay let me take that negative emotion to the Holy Spirit right now let me take that negative pattern to the Lord right now let, let me find a different path for this thought where it always leads to the fridge let me take it somewhere else right now and then when you finish the fasting you retrained your negative toxic emotions to go to the proper place for healing and then you will keep up the weight keep off the weight because you're not feeding your emotions physically somebody say amen come on this was worth for just coming just for this to the church today the, the third benefit of fasting is that I said it brings transformation is that brings spiritual benefit. The Bible says the spirit of man can sustain him in his sickness but who can bear a broken spirit? Fasting has spiritual benefits. It moves me not God. It increases my sensitivity to the Lord. It's not that fasting makes God talk. It just helps us to listen. Fasting restores our hunger for God and fasting regains control of our appetites something happens when we fast spiritually is that your spirit begins to finally get a full nourishment as your flesh was doing before the fasting you finally can feel what your spirit felt because physically you feel that ache that's how the spirit always feels this ache and hunger for God's word now I am not talking about when you're only going without food but when we are feeding our spirit during the time of fasting we are feasting in our spiritual life something begins to happen our spirit gets stronger and for those of you who are like oh but my body is dying listen to this what the scripture says your spirit can take care of your body but your body cannot take care of your spirit your spirit can handle weak sick and broken body that's why you can go without food for 21 days and you're like how come my body is better spirit is carrying it the Bible says a spirit can sustain. When your food cannot sustain your body, your spirit turns, turns the shifts, shifts things and begins to take care and sustain your body. Watch this with Deuteronomy chapter 8 says this. So he humbled you, I'm bringing this message to a close. He humbled you, allowed you to hunger, fed you with manna which you did not know nor your fathers knew, that he, that he might make you know that a man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is the verse Jesus quoted to Satan in the wilderness. He humbled you. He made you hunger. And I'm remembering Israel. When did they hunger? Every day they had manna. Before they got manna. Do you remember the first three days after Exodus they had no food and no drink? What if I were to tell you? It's my opinion. It's not in the Bible. Just my opinion. Take it and leave it. God created a three-day fast for Israel so that he can teach them that they should live by his word God made them fast first three days without telling them so he can humble them now in, of course what they did they whined complained doubted and all of the negative emotions came and instead of taking those negative emotions to the word of God they took him to Moses and they tried to take Moses out wanted to go back to Egypt and so they never learned the lesson of fasting which was this the humility of the flesh so you can feed your spiritual life and so then you can be positioned to receive God's supernatural provision and step into God's promises in your life even when God made Adam he also made him fast it was a Daniel's fast you can't eat of that tree guess what Adam did broke his fast <laughs> God took Israel out of Egypt he took them through fasting guess what they did they complained and they whined because the slave the negative toxic emotions had to find source in the food and God wanted them he says so that I can teach you that a man shall not live by everything that's in your refrigerator but lives by the word of God. Fasting teaches you you are more than your body. 
Fasting teaches you you are more than your food. Fasting teaches you you are an eternal spirit and your spirit is the lamp of the Lord and if you take care of your spirit your spirit will take care of your body and so fasting helps to transform the soul the body and also strengthen your spirit. Can somebody say amen? And last one is fasting helps you to know the will of God. Romans 12 1 and 2 we know the mercy of God we give our body as a, as a sacrifice. We don't get conformed to this world. We, we have renewed of the mind. We experience transformation in our life so that we can prove to know the will of God. I truly believe that there is our plan for our life. There is the devil's plot for our life. And there is also God's purpose for our life. And when you begin to fast, even if God doesn't reveal to you his purpose, he will guide you. He will steer you to his purpose. He will close doors that have been opened before and He will open doors that are not open right now. He will call you and lead you to His purpose. He will begin to open doors where they previously have never been opened. He will begin to connect you to prophetic words supernaturally. I'm talking about where you could not take the credit for it. God will begin to take you to that place. You know a long time ago I think it was Ivan who mentioned that at one conference somebody prophesied to me that I will go back to my country where I came from and I will preach there it's been 20 years I never went back to my country to preach went a few times but not to preach and I wasn't honestly looking forward to it and I wasn't planning for it and I did not um, have a desire for it last week on Sunday we came back from the Holy Spirit conference in California and I get a call from one of the most known pastors in the Ukraine who has a very large church over 1500 people and some seven churches under him I met him previously and just in passing and I struggled with my Russian couldn't make couldn't make sense of my own Russian and so I'm pretty sure he thought of me like man this guy can't even speak and so he facetimes me and he said he said this is weird he says, I want you to come next weekend and speak at my church 11th anniversary. Which is church anniversaries are a big deal. I was like, I can't put two words together in Russian. He says, this is weird, but I really feel that you need to come for a youth conference and for, a, for, for our uh, anniversary. And so we prayed about it. I asked my pastor's permission. And next weekend at this time, I ask you that you pray for me because it will be still during the fast where the prophetic word that was given long time ago, God somehow connected the dots. God will unlock His will in your life. You may say, why does it take fasting? Because fasting is humbling yourself. And God exalts those who humble themselves. Fasting is not showing off. It's not bragging about it. It's not saying, hey, look at me because I'm fasting. Look at me because I'm more spiritual. Look at me because I'm more disciplined. Fasting is about denial, not self-glorification. And when you begin to do that, the Bible says He will reveal His perfect will for you. In book of Acts, it says that Apostle Paul and Barnabas was ministering to the Lord and fasting. And the Spirit of God said, separate Barnabas, separate Paul to the work which I've called them. I preached a message a few years ago called fast forward. There is a work you currently have and there is a work you were called to have. When you fast God takes you from the current to the cold. He takes you from what is familiar to what is his will right now in your life. What is his perfect perfect will in your life. There are things that God called you to do that is not available right now. There's no open door. They're not hiring. There's no vacancy in that area. There are dreams. You just don't have resources and the connections. But when you begin to fast, you're humbling yourself. Say, Lord, lead me to your will. God, there's what I want, but I want what you want for my life. I want your purpose for my life. You know, we want a new building for our church. But most importantly, what we want is a revival in our church. Most importantly what we want is salvation of people in our church. We know that this is God's perfect will for our church. That every service double digit salvations will come in here. That every week hundreds of people will give their lives to Jesus Christ. You know what we want is what God wants. That none will perish. That people in the city will meet Jesus pulled from darkness into light. You know what we want is that the sick will be healed. That children will not be buried their mother or their father because of tumors in their heads or because of cancer in their lungs 
tongues but the power of Jesus will heal the power of Jesus will restore that the name of Jesus will be glorified people who died prematurely that they will not die that's what we want and God says when you begin to know my grace when you begin to offer my body your body as a sacrifice when you begin to not be molded to the image of this world I will make your mind renewed I will make your mind resilient I will transform your life and I will make my will known to you I will make my will known to you my perfect will my good will my acceptable will for your life there is a perfect there is a good and there is an acceptable will of God for your life and we're about to step into it I'm not saying this will be your best year but I believe that if we humble ourselves God will lead us to his best will I believe if we humble ourselves God will lead us to his bath pass God will lead our children God will lead our businesses he will be in control and whoever is in the White House will not affect what's happening in your house because your house will be under the control your house will be under the leadership and the power of the great white throne of the presence and the glory of God God.